You hear us mention the concept of health and wellness coaching quite a bit on this podcast for obvious reasons. Well, what is a health and wellness coach? What does a session sound like? What is the process like? Last weekend at our annual Rocky Mountain Coaching Retreat and Symposium, one of the sessions involved a nationally board certified coach demonstrating a real life coaching session in front of the entire audience of coaches. The feedback on the value was powerful and we thought if it's that beneficial for other coaches to hear, think how valuable it would be for the rest of us to tune into. Welcome to the latest episode of the Catalyst Health, Wellness, and Performance Coaching Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Cooper of the Catalyst Coaching Institute, and today's episode is an unscripted, real live coaching session provided by Tammy Duncan, a nationally board certified health and wellness coach. It was originally recorded with the permission of both the client and the coach, and the insights you'll garner from hearing it, well, they're just tremendous. If you've never experienced a coaching session with a nationally board certified coach, I think you'll be amazed at what can happen in a brief, in this case, 20 minutes session. It's, it's also likely that as you listen to their discussion, you'll identify with some of the things Susan, the client, is wrestling with, either directly or indirectly. Their discussion may help you work through parts of your own journey. And of course, if you're a current or future health and wellness coach, you're certain to pick up a few ideas of your own to enhance your coaching skills. In fact, one of the best parts is that once the session comes to a close, the coach and the client spend a few minutes providing a debrief about what happened in the session, what they learned, and what they might have done differently. So you'll want to stick around for that part. If you've been thinking about pursuing your certification as a health and wellness coach, our trainings for 2021 have wrapped up, but it's never too early to book your spot for January before that one fills up. For those who like to work ahead, that also allows you to start the on-demand aspects of the training in advance of the January program as soon as you get registered. All the details at catalystcoachinginstitute.com. And as always, feel free to reach out to us anytime with questions Results at CatalystCoachingInstitute.com. We can set up a phone call to chat. Now, let's listen in to a live, real, unscripted coaching session with a nationally board certified health and wellness coach on the latest episode of the Catalyst Health, Wellness, and Performance Coaching Podcast. Thank you, first of all, for just coming in and just wanted to see what you would like to focus on for today. Thank you, Tammy. Um... You know, really right now, I am overwhelmed. Mm. There's a lot going on, and I feel like my head is spinning a lot of the time, and I can't really um, hunker down on one thing or for a long period of time. Mm. So you're feeling burdened and just kind of like you're in a whirlwind? Yes, absolutely. There's okay. just a lot going on. I mean, being, you know, I'm 47. Mm-hmm. I have um, three girls that are two are teenagers, one's 11. But then I'm sandwiched between that and then my precious mom and dad and mm-hmm. my in-laws who are, you know, their health is failing them. And they're on the other side of the country. <laughs> they are. Okay. Um, and it's just a lot. Mm-hmm. Um and, and then also working and taking care of everyone. And, you know, it's just, it's hard. Yes. So are you feeling pressure to be near your family? That is a very, um, yes, yes, I am. I am. Mm-hmm. And I can't. <laughs> That's the frustrating yeah. piece is that, you know, we moved out here 14 years ago to Colorado. Mm-hmm. And now that, you know, my fa- my parents my husband's parents, and then my aunt and uncle, you know, they're getting older. And yeah. the caregiving I have to do from out here, right? Um, which I do. Mm. But sometimes it would be nice just to be there more often and be able to put my hands on them and, you know, be able to help more. Yes. So with all of that, so with your family, that's the, the health is failing and your family now, your kids, your husband, yes. Where do you kind of find space for your own self? Um, but, well, I, I play tennis, okay. which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I tried journaling for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't really found recently the space. I mean, I have space for sure, mm-hmm. but it's, it's um, what it is that I want to put in that space. Yeah, that is um, most um, beneficial. That helps me mm-hmm. to grow and and um, 
to not even grow, just to be peaceful. Mm. Um, you know, I am very spiritual. Um, and maybe I'm not devoting enough time to that. I just, I, I don't know, mm-hmm. um, where it is. Cause I feel like I'm always moving. Yes. When you kind of reflect back on maybe a season where, uh, this is a time where I felt energized. This is a time where I felt fed and where I felt like not necessarily that I had time for everything, but I felt like I had, um, you know, some claim on time. Do you, do you recall anything that, um, sticks out to you that you were doing in that season? Hmm. I can't think of a season recently <laughs> that was like that. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking, I mean, before children, yeah, <laughs> I was a teacher, um, mm-hmm. and that was very fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Um, then, you know, having to, when my children were young, I think it was very fulfilling because you could physically, um, fix things and, you know, do things to take care of them. It looked very different mm-hmm. than it does now. Um, and maybe that, you know, peace, um, was that time period was, was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, okay. but lately <laughs> it's been kind Not. of chaotic. <laughs> yeah. Well, and your kids are in a new season. So you, like you said, um, at that time you were kind of the fixer and you were somebody that was a caretaker and they needed you and they depended on you. Right. And so you have these teenagers mm-hmm. that are growing into some independency where they don't need as much of that. And so you truly have to kind of let go and step back. It, it, do you feel like that's difficult for you to, to let that go? Is that, is that what you're mourning a little bit? Actually? Yes. That's mm-hmm. exactly what's happening. Now that you say that, I think is I have, I do have more time and more Mm -hmm. space and I don't know what to do with myself. (laughs) I mean, I'm there to help guide them. Um, but part of being a teenager is to figure it out on their, their own and to let them make the mistakes now. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, now that you say that, maybe that's what's going on is Mm -hmm. I'm just like, what do I do? Yeah. And it's not that I don't have things to do. I mean, I work and things like that, but it's, it's almost like I need more purpose. Yeah. Mm, That's good. Um, because I have a lot to give and I love giving. I just need, I just feel like I need more Mm -hmm. to give, Mm -hmm. which is, is such a paradox because I was talking about with caregiving but now I'm, I'm here. I can't physically care give for my parents. So, um, yeah. Mm. So yeah, that's an interesting place to be of kind of going, okay, wh- what do I do with this new season? It sounds like that's where you are of, okay, my purpose as a mom even is changing. My purpose mm-hmm. as a daughter and, and relative of these family members is, is a little different. Um, and so how do I, you know, weave that. And, and, and sometimes, you know, I think that we, as moms, especially we kind of like, it's hard for us to know, well, what, what is my role kind of, um, move into if I'm not caretaking them, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe that's some of that. Do you feel like that, um, that purpose, do you, um, does anything come to mind as far as just direction, and even maybe learning what that direction is, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, yes. Um, something that has been on the top of my mind and I've been talking about for (laughs) a while is, is going back to get my counseling degree. Mm. Um, but I, I go back and forth. Like I, you know, one hand I'm like, if I do that, will I not have enough time to take care of my family? Mm -hmm. Um, that kind of goes in the back of my mind, but to your point, you said just a few minutes ago, they don't really need me as much as they used to. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're, they're pretty self-sufficient. I mean, my 11 year old needs me more. Um, but my husband works from home and, and that's been a change too. Back in May, he started working from home. And so that looks very different (laughs) from when he used to travel and, you know, he would be gone from eight to six every day. Um, That's been a change too. 
And so mm-hmm. it has freed up even more time for me yes. because he's helping yes. um, wow. with the children and he's available. Um, so, yeah, that, so a lot of things have changed. Yes. Um, and maybe that's, you know, that's kind of interesting that, that I just realized that, that a lot of things have changed. Mm-hmm. And when a few, you know, maybe a year ago I looked at the counseling and I was like, absolutely not. Yeah. I can't because right. there was too much going on mm. now seems like it's something that I could do and I'm getting closer to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I feel like that's something you're excited about. And really these changes are exciting. I mean, this is good transition. And especially when you feel good about your daughters, those, your older daughters that are, you feel good about them being, doing things on their own. It's not that you need to hover over them. Um, you feel good about that. Your husband's at home now. So that, that's also comforting. You know, that's Mm -hmm. also, um, such a good thing. And so it sounds like there's things that are kind of in place for you. Do you feel that way? You know, with my spirituality, um, Mm -hmm. I keep asking, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, God, please tell me when, where, you know, I am, I'm waiting and you're right. Like, I just need to step back and say, he's telling me, (laughs) I just need to trust him and it may not be perfect and it may not go exactly as I think it should, but it, it might be time to trust that he has lined things up. Yeah. So that I can do this and I can give back. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's, that's a big piece. Mm-hmm. So if you were to do the counseling degree, if that's something you thought I'm going to do that, um, what do you see is, I mean, what joy or what good things do you see coming from a, a situation or a decision like that? Hmm. A focused learning. Hmm. And then, um, being able to give back, um, just our family has had a lot of challenges as all families do. (laughs) Um, and we've worked with a lot of counselors ourselves Mm. and I just think it's um, necessary right now. I feel a calling, um, to be there for other people Mm. in that way. Um, so yeah, I think, so you ask what good will come from that, that, you know, that, you know, getting closer to having that purpose and being able to give back and yeah. in that way. Yeah. So it's not only using your skills. It's also, yeah. this is for the good of other people. This is what's happened in my own life. I want to return that. Yes. And I've mm-hmm. experienced a, a lot of things that I feel like I have some perspective on that I could share. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And walk with them like we do, you know, with the coaching. Mm -hmm. It's the same type of thing, but with a a little bit more, um, you know, they would be challenged in different ways. Yes, that's good. Any obstacles that you see if you were to decide, yes, I'm doing this, what would be the challenges for that? Time and finances. Okay. Yes. And those are the things I'm looking into right now, actually. Good. Um, trying to be inspired by many others who make things work. Yes. And I know it can work. Mm -hmm. I just have to, you know, trust. Yes. Yes. And we can always make those excuses, right? It's like those pop up before, (laughs) sometimes way before the positive things do. And and they can kind of crowd out some of those positive thoughts as well. Um, So, yeah. So I guess I, when you kind of think about what, what we're talking about today, I mean, what do you feel like, okay, I need to make a decision about the counseling or do you feel like, no, I really kind of need to, it needs to be something else that, that I need to fill Mm -hmm. myself with. Um, I think that's a really good question. Um, I think I should move forward Mm -hmm. with applying. Okay. Um, however, I still think short term, like that's more of a long term Mm -hmm. goal. Um, short term, I still need to figure out (laughs) how to create more peace. And maybe it is just to, um, I I don't know. I don't know how to create more peace. Honestly, Mm -hmm. I'm trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think short term I do, there's gotta be something I need to work on something else. Okay. Um, I love reading. I read Mm. a ton. Um, yes. 
Yeah. So you're, it sounds like you're kind of feeling that you need, you almost need to establish some, some peace and contentment before moving on to this, this degree. Yes. Okay. And so what is the first step with that? Is it finding something that you truly, that will feed you or is it, I mean, it sounds like you're not really sure how to create that peace. Um, what can I offer to help you? (laughs) Um, I I don't know. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's, um, I wish I knew, Mm. um, that's, that's the troubling part. Yeah. Can I offer just a suggestion? Yes, please. Okay. (laughs) Any suggestions you want to give me, I am happy to hear. Well, let me ask you this before I offer that. Do you already kind of have a quiet time like that's set in the day? No. Okay. And to your point, maybe I need more structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Maybe, maybe that's a piece of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What I was going to offer was just even just morning structure, like say, you know, but whenever you get up, what, Mm -hmm. you know, 7am, whatever that is, 7am to 11am is going to be structured and let's not worry about the rest of the day. I know that you have a job and probably the rest of the day is set anyway, but whatever time frame you want to make that. And so you decide I'm going to write in seven to eight a.m. Create peace, and that's all I'm going to write on that. Mm. And then you kind of reflect each morning during that time. What do I need during this time? What is going to bring me peace? Um, and so, and then the rest of the time is structured with whatever you want. You know, tea and reading, or or whatever it is. But just just a time frame for creating peace. Um, and since you don't know what that is, and I don't know what that is. I think that when you, um, enter that time each morning, it's going to start to come to you. Mm. What are your thoughts about that? I love that. It reminds me of the Bible verse that I have even, I've had people give me a necklace. My daughter has it. It's be still and know that Mm. I am God. Yes. And it's, it's a, that's a challenge for me. Yeah. Um, Most and maybe that's, yes, most of us. So maybe that's what I do is put, you know, make sure that that Bible verse is hmm. ingrained. But then I yeah. love that create peace. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it could be in the morning, but I also could do it at night. That's right. And it's my time. And I let my family know I'm creating peace now. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> exactly. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So do you picture yourself in the evening more so than in the morning? No, no. Okay. No, I see, um, both times opportunities. Okay. To do so. Um, yeah. Okay. So, and tell me, so if you do, if you decide that 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 is what you would like to do. What is your accountability? Like, is it your phone? Is it, what do you use? What tools do you use for those kinds of things? My calendar. Okay. I mean, it would be where I need to the night before look at my calendar and Mm -hmm. say, okay, this is a good time. Or it could be, I try mornings for a little while. Uh huh. Um, middle of the day is also a good time for me. Okay. Um, like after lunch Mm -hmm. is a good time. Um, And then, yeah, maybe it would be morning or middle of the day, depending on my work schedule. Right. Um, Okay. That is, that is good just to have that time to create peace. Yeah. I like it. Okay. So if we were to kind of say here, here's the goals, here's the focus. It sounds like it is nightly look at the calendar and write in, or is it, weekly, write that in all through the week. What was, what I think it'd be weekly, weekly. Cause that's, that's pretty much how I do my calendar. Okay. Um, yeah, it would be weekly for sure. Okay. Um, okay. So weekly write in, create peace in a time frame slot that you want. Um, and then, I mean this, the other focus I guess would truly be just to let yourself be during those times. Um, and just to kind of let, let yourself kind of realize what, 
what it is that is going to create. Maybe it is just being quiet. <laughs> maybe that's all you need, but maybe something will come to you as well, perhaps. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's wonderful. Oh, just space. Space. And I think you used that earlier today. Is, yeah. I just need space. Yeah. Okay. I love it. Me too. Just to process. Yes. To process, reflect. Okay. Love it. Anything else that you would say would be a good focus um, with this? No focus. No. I mean, I think you, <laughs> yeah. you, you, you know, the space piece, I think, I think that's what I'm coming to realize is that my brain is always going. Mm, yes. I mean, even at 3 a.m. in the morning, mm -hmm. right? It's always moving and going and thinking and processing. And mm -hmm. um, I think I just need some downtime. Okay. That sounds wonderful. All right. Well, we'll check in on these things and I'll see how it's going in a few weeks. Okay. Sound good? Yes. Thank you okay. so much, Tammy. Yes. Thank you, Susan. All right, everyone, it's Brad. I just popped my head in here. We are now going to go back to these two, and they're going to share their thoughts about how to go. So some reflection on the part of the coach and some reflection on the part of the client. Back to Tammy and Susan. I, I felt like that went really well. At the beginning, though, I was a little like, where this is this is wide open. So I'm like, oh, boy, this could be hard to focus in on one thing. Right, right. And it was, I mean, coming here today, I just, I actually thought it would be a little bit more about stress, mm. which it kind of was, but it was really neat how it unfolded and, and the questions that you asked, but then your reflections, mm. those were what helped me to kind of figure out exactly where I am. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it, it's funny. Cause I, I felt like, I, you know, we can always relate to things, you know, and sometimes I get real excited about putting my own input in. And I was like, Oh, I hope I'm not doing too much of that of my own. Like, you know, I think, and I believe that. <laughs> so anyway, I was hoping that reflections were coming through and not just here's what I think. So, yeah. I mean, you did such a beautiful job. Oh, um, thanks. you know, with your reflections, they were dead on. Um, and they weren't simple because being a coach, you know, it is not, they weren't simple. They were, you, you dug a little bit deeper and you were right on, mm. um, which is what led me to be able to figure out, okay, I just need this space. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know, it's always going from one thing to the next and worrying about a bajillion different people. And, yes. and sometimes, you know, you can't see what is it? the forest for the trees or whatever that saying is yeah. because there's just too much going on. Yes. Yes. There's that other perspective that kind of clears the way, right? It's like kind of clears those trees out of the way so that you can see a little bit better. So I'm glad that that helped with that. And I think we do, we do, we have, and I think with coaching, it is, it's so apparent that we have so much going on and it's like, if we can just zoom into what we actually need, it's like, that's where wellness is, is kind of comes from, right? It's like, well, we're, we're taking care of everybody else, but it's like, what do I need for my own wellness? And sometimes we feel selfish about that, but it's, it's so great to like, to kind of bring clients to a place of this is you, this is vital for you so that you can do all these other things beautifully and well. Absolutely. Huh? Because, because what happens is what's happened to me is it, you know, just through that is thinking, you know, my sleep has been affected Yes, and that's yeah. a physical piece. Um, you know, I have to be careful about, um, exercise because that can also, um, not allow space mm -hmm. because it's so focused and, um, it's moving. Yes. And, um, mm. you know, and, and that doesn't allow space for me. Mm -hmm. Everyone is different. Um, so I think that was, that was another something that I was able to sift through. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is that I need quiet, mm -hmm. whatever that is. And it mean, and, and no, <laughs> if I can shut my brain down long enough just to, like you said, I like the word reflect myself mm -hmm. on, okay, what do I need? 
Yes. Right. And we yeah. talk to our clients about that all the time. Yeah, um, exactly. But it's hard to do. Right. And a lot of, I know that, you know, in this, it was like, okay, I was kind of wrecking my brain at, at one point going, okay, what does she need more tennis? Does she need, <laughs> I was kind of going through like what you had mentioned that you love, you know, you love to read. And, and so then I was like, you know, what? I don't, I don't really have the answer. So I felt like you, I knew that you didn't have the answer because you, you said that yourself. And so I felt like you needed to make that clear to yourself in, in your own practice of, of sitting and listening or, or whatever, you know, having that space. And so I kind of, I, I appreciated that I couldn't give you the answer on, honestly, I couldn't offer you much to say, well, here's what I think you need to be doing. Not that we do that as coaches necessarily, but I wanted to so much, you know, it's like, I wanted some, since you didn't know, I was like, well, I want to know what, what the answer is, but I really didn't. Wow. Timmy, that's huge <laughs> because you know, it, where I am now, you really listened to where I am now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? If yes, we had gone yes. through a list of things to do, it would have been something that I would have taken home and not done. Yes. Because that's, so true. that's not what I need. Mm -hmm. Um, interesting. Yes. And you really heard that and mm -hmm. you allowed me that space. Yes. To figure out where I need space. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. huge. Cause do you ever feel like we're, we're in, sometimes we want to be fixers, you know, yes. we want to be, we want to have the answer because, well, we live out wellness really well. So, <laughs> so surely we have all the answers, but we don't, you we know, don't. and everybody's so different and unique. And so it's like, what would work for me? Isn't going to work for you. And so I can't push that on you. Um, so Yes. And you did such a beautiful job with that. Well, thank you. And thanks for sharing yes. all of that. Well, it was, it was really good. And, and now I'm looking forward to creating space. Powerful process, isn't it? You can see why we brought that one back. If you'd like to hear more examples of real life coaching sessions, you can find two more in our podcast library. If you go back to episode, this is going way back, episode number 10 and episode number 21. I was actually the person being coached in episode number 10. And I'll tell you, the positive results from that session are still providing benefits today, almost three years later. Thanks for tuning in to the number one podcast for health and wellness coaching. Next week's episode features an interview with one of the world's top researchers in the employee health and wellness arena, Dr. Ron Getzel. Now it's our turn. Our turn to take that step, to move forward, to make the most of every opportunity, to be a catalyst. This is Dr. Bradford Cooper of the Catalyst Coaching Institute. Make it a great rest of your week. And I'll speak with you soon on the next episode of the Catalyst Health, Wellness and Performance Coaching Podcast, or maybe over on the YouTube coaching channel.